Now, over time, brands which started off very interesting, the word brand itself comes from the Norse, uh, from Norway, Norse word to burn. Why did it come from that? Because initially the word, the branding started with in the West, in the US, in the early days when they wanted to brand cattle because they found that when the cattle all went out to graze and they came back, they didn't know which cattle belonged to which, uh, you know, which farmer. So in order to distinguish, they just put some hot iron symbols so that and branded them on the back with that hot iron thing, which is called a brand, put it on the back of the cow so that you could distinguish between one cattle belonging to farm, one particular farm as opposed to cattle belonging to other farm. So the word brand then stuck. So it started off really as an identifier, then became kind of a discriminator and then became a container of various shared meanings and beliefs. So let's see some allusion to religion which is all pervasive across the world and also looking at brands, what exactly this means. As I mentioned earlier, it started off with cattle branding so that one could identify which cattle belong to which farm. So you will also find this happening in a more uh, sophisticated way. You will find it in football, in cricket, in many sports, many key personalities wearing a certain number of jersey. For example, in cricket, you have somebody like Sachin Tendulkar who typically wears the number 10. If you look at football, Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, arguably the world's highest paid player, wears the jersey number 7. So and so on and so forth. It's actually, you know, modern version of cattle maybe, if you want to be a little frivolous. So what does really mean is something which helps you identify what a seller's offering is and distinguish it from others. So like the Nike Swish, the Apple and so on and so forth are all identifiers. You can use anything, name, design, trademark, logo, swoosh, whatever. So if you look at Christianity, as a religion, it's very clearly identifiable by the cross. Some other places, you know, uh, the kind of swastika to denote certain aspects of the Hindu religion. Like that, there are several symbols. But if you just take Christianity, the cross clearly identifies. So the next stage is to start discriminating, to say this is different from the other. For example, the cows from ABC Ranch are fatter New Jersey cows. New Jersey cows are a breed of cows. So they are better and fatter New Jersey cows. Sachin Tendulkar is a better batsman because he can bat in all formats. Test, one day, 2020, and he has scored the most number of centuries, so on, it's higher strike rate and so on and so forth. So what are we trying to do here? We are saying there are some distinct attributes, certain distinct features which tell you that this product or this brand is considerably different from another brand. So if you look at from a religious context, what we are trying to say here is this is the path to heaven, it will give you redemption from our various misdeeds and sins, it will grant you mercy, it will help you get heavenly intervention and protect you from various kinds of ill effects, it will also make you, you know, it gives you a sense of affiliation and recognition within a certain kind of community and makes you feel good. These are ways by which, you know, the Christianity attempts, for example, to discriminate itself, to differentiate itself. Similarly, the third bit is how do you manage the overall context of beliefs? So, you try to say that you are getting better milk, whiter, richer, more quality milk from ABC Ranch cows because they are generally happier cows, they have been treated much better, they are looked after much better, get better input, so on and so forth. The other way to look at it is Sachin, despite all his fame, despite all his money, despite all his achievements, he is a very humble, very unassuming, down to earth fellow and he is a true hero, despite all his fame. So what we are trying to say here is, can we build a unique assortment of thoughts, feelings, associations and values with that name. So this goes far be deeper from an identifier to a discriminator to a more sustained, more deeper association. So that's the third bit. So look at it this way. So the more higher level values of charity, compassion, sacrifice, you know, so that's what is the third and higher level of 
belief. So, if you look at it, there is for a brand or the, for the brand strategy, there is an evolution of from identity to you know, there are aspects of identity, the aspects of personality, image, position, and your unique selling proposition. So, let us understand this a little bit more. There is, for example, if you are looking at the brand identity, there is the well known Capferrer model. And I would ask you to close a look at your textbook to understand this. But what we will try and do here is give you the model in a broad level and take three distinct shoe brands to see how it actually uh, translates into practice. So, if you look at a brand prism according to Cap Ferrer, on the one side you have the picture of the sender and on the other side you have the picture of the receiver and in the middle you have the context. So, if you take the picture of the sender, you have the physique you know we will explain that a little bit, the personality on the one side and if you look at the picture of the receiver, there is the reflection on the one side, the self image and if you look at the context, it is the relationship and the culture, you know the internal aspect and the external aspect. So, this is the context that we have. So, if you look at a specific, understand a little bit about these specific terms and go into the examples. So, if you look at the physique which is actually the external uh, features, what is it that tangibly appears in front of you, what are the specific actions and movements associated with it. For example, if you take coke, the bottle shape is pretty distinct, but a lot of people do not realize that even the shape of the bottle has evolved over time. If you look at Mercedes, there is a certain solidity along with the tri star image, I mean thing over there, there is a certain solidity associated with Mercedes. So, think again of several products physical attributes, physically how does it appear to you, what is it that comes to mind for you when you look at the physical aspect. Similarly, the personality hmm, which has you know many brands have certain unique characteristics and traits, almost human you might say and it is often embodied by the brand spokespeople. A very important one for instance, if you take India, you have the Raymond man, the Raymond's man, you know they are trying to create a certain set of association, a personality around the Raymond's man. Similarly, the Marlboro man is part of brand legend, the way they have created a certain rugged uh, outdoorsy, uh, you know individualistic man. There is also the Harley Davidson motorcycle which has a completely unique almost cult kind of an image. Similarly, if you take between Pepsi yeah, as a soft drink, they are trying to create in India particularly a very youthful kind of uh, you know iconoclastic kind of image. So, a lot of bunch of almost very human characteristics that people try to associate with this brand personality. 